Hi friends! Today we are going to be doing a drawing with colored pencil of a blue jay. So the materials you'll need, just a drawing paper, I have a um, just normal pencil. I like to use the, the light one if you do have a variety, but if you have your uh, yellow pencil from school, that's fine as well. Uh, good to have an eraser. And then we are going to be learning about value today. So um, the blue jay has various blue tones to it. So I have a light blue, kind of a medium sky blue, and a deeper blue, this is called ultramarine. And then we'll also use black to do some of those darker um, feathers. So the first thing we're gonna start off with, once you have your materials ready, um, we are going to do a line drawing. So as always, I always start with a really light pressure, that way we can move things around if we need to. Um, decide where you would like to put your subject, so your bird. Our bird is going to be flying, so if you want it in the center of your paper, maybe on the far left coming in, um, maybe lower, so you decide where you would like it to be on your paper. And then we're gonna start out with just a circle. This is gonna be for the head. So it's a little bit more towards the right side. And again, it's really light sketch, so barely touching your paper as we've been doing before. Next, we are going to do the curve for the um, top of the back. So near the top of your circle, you're going to do a curve line curving up slightly and back down and then we are going to um, we're not going to see much of the body so we're going to add the wings here so you are going to do a curve line curving around from the end of that line back towards the um, head And then on the left side of your circle here, just go ahead and do a curved line curving down. So this is the um, general shape of our wing. And then we wanna go down to the tail. So just above this little point here, you're going to do a curved line curving over towards the left and downward. They have a pretty long tail. Now go back to the um, left side of the wing. You're going to do a diagonal straight line pointing down towards the bottom left side of the paper. And then we're just gonna do a curved line to connect the ends of those lines. So that's the basic shapes to build um, the anatomy of the body. Uh, now we're going to go back towards the head. So like we learned in the slideshow, we have um, a little crest, which is, it almost looks like a little birthday hat on the top of your head. So you're going to do a short diagonal straight line pointing up towards the left. And then you're going to go from the top of the head, curve line to connect to the end of that straight line and that's going to be that that little crest on the top of their head now this uh, forgot to mention pressing a little bit harder now so I started with a sketch and now I'm pressing with medium pressure curving down Now we're going to do the beak. They have a pretty long cone-shaped beak, so you're gonna do a diagonal straight line pointing down towards the bottom, right? Comes to a point, so then it comes back towards the head. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna shave off a little bit of this um, circle here. So I'm just going to do a curve line, but it's going to go and connect to the wing right here. 
Okay, so um, that's our general shape. So go ahead and grab your eraser. You can erase any of the sketch lines that we don't need anymore. Uh, so the next step we are going to do is add um, the face. So starting here where the um, little back of the crest is, then we're going to use a hard pressure. So press down really hard. Notice I hold my pencil closer towards the tip to have a little more control. And then you're going to do a curved line curving over towards the left. And then it curves down until it connects to the neck. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is the eye. So right here in the middle of the face, you can sketch an oval. So it's just a slightly smushed circle. Then from the angle here, from the top, you're going to curve down until it touches the left side of your, your eye. It's going to actually go through the eye towards the beak. Uh, similar to the cardinal we drew the other day, um, they do have this like black, almost mask um, on their face outline. So um, next you're going to go back to the left side of the eye, leave a little bit of space in between this line and the next, and then you're going to curve back towards the left, down, I don't lift my pencil, curve back towards the left, and then down to the neck. So this, um, this shape right here is going to be colored in black. Just before we do that, I want to add a little circle inside the eye. Let me bring that closer so you guys can see. Um, and that's going to be left white for the, um, the highlight. So um, before we add the black, we just have a few more areas right between the beak and the eye. We're going to do this curved up and then to connect to the beak and then down, connect to the beak. Then just connect um, the top of the beak with the bottom of the beak. You guys are doing great. That, that's a lot of detail right there. Now let's go ahead and grab our black colored pencil. Uh, and I'm just gonna outline the area that we just created. Now, don't worry if yours doesn't look the exact same shape as mine, you know, just like us, all, all birds, all animals have slightly different variations in the, the color patterns, so they're all going to be a little bit different. That's the cool part, though. So I'm just shading this, and I'm using a really hard pressure because I like that really deep black. Again, my little trick, just keep rotating your piece so that you can get a better um, handle on coloring those areas in. All right. 
And then the eye, we do want to do a lighter outline so that it's kind of really dark gray. So just go ahead and outline around the eye with a light pressure. So you'll see the difference between the dark black and then the lighter gray. And then inside the eye, leave that little white highlight, but just go ahead and darken the pupil. So the pupil, we all have it, um, that black dot in our eye. I tend to, um, when I have little tiny chips of my colored pencil, I'll use my hand, but especially with the darker color, I think it's better just, just blow on it and then you won't smear it like I have up here. Okay, so while we still have this, um, this dark color, we're going to add it into the beak. So from the point of the beak, just go ahead and do a diagonal straight line going back towards the face. The top of the beak is uh, bigger than the bottom. And then I'm still using my black, but I'm going to use a lighter pressure, so it'll be kind of a gray color, to shade the bottom of the beak. And then super, super light, like barely touching for the top of the beak. So you can even see a slight difference in this triangle, the value, so the lighter value, and this bottom triangle, the darker value. All right, so um, this uh, drawing is actually based off of this beautiful um, artwork by the artist. His name is Adam Hansinger. Um, and he is actually a tattoo artist, so uh, tattoo artists, illustrators like to use really dark lines. So I wanted to show you guys a different style of how to create um, kind of realistic but also more stylized uh, version of a bird versus the more cute one we did uh, the other day. So <clears throat> what we're going to do is continue to use this black. So just follow along with me and we're going to start to create the different fluid lines for this beautiful wing. So the first thing you're gonna do, I want you to split this whole entire area, here's the wing. I want you to split it from the top here, just little curve, curving up and down. So it's about one third in this area, two thirds down here. So bigger space near the bottom. That's gonna be those much longer wings. So starting out with these shorter wing, um, shorter feathers, sorry, the shorter feathers here, we're gonna start in this top corner and we're gonna layer them with nice curved lines. So you're gonna do a diagonal straight line pointing down towards the bottom left and then it's gonna curve up. It's almost like a a J, see that, the letter J. Now you're gonna go back to the top of the wing, go down and then curve up. So we are just creating these um, curved lines for the wings. When you look at those, um, the pictures of the real blue jays, they have a lot more detail, but we'll just get the, um, the main feeling of it here. So that's one layer and next we're going to do another layer that's pretty much a meeting here. So right on the top left side I'm going to start with a curved line for a wing and then leave a little bit of space, do another curve up that way. So I'm just gonna keep layering these wings down. Um, I won't explain it, we can just do it together.
Now when you get to the bottom here, you can just squeeze that last wig in, that last feather. Alright, so these are the first set of feathers. Birds is also called the, the plumage. These are where you get those really beautiful like aqua, um, blue, deep blue colors. Uh, then in these longer feathers, which we're going to add, there's a little bit um, more gray towards the, the ends, which will shade in together. So the, the wing is like fanned out, right? So they're really close together, close to the body, but then like our fingers will like spread out. That's how the wing is going to be. So I want you to start by just outlining the top of the back here. And then we're going to just leave a little bit of space between that first line and the wing. So right here, see where we have this little um, point in between those two? That's where we're going to place this first wing. So you're going to just do a curve line curving down. And then at the bottom, we want it to curve, to connect. So look for these little areas right here where the wings part, and that's where we're going to add these lines. So it's slightly curved line down till we meet our line that we sketched and then you can curve it around to connect it. So you see this direction starts to um, go downward this way. So we do want to make sure that we're spreading them out, not just going directly down towards the bottom left. Um, so just keep moving your lines, really be like nice fluid lines coming down. So back to, you know, our, our element of, um, of art, we're creating this texture by splitting each of the um, feathers to create our, our wing. And then we are um, creating like a proportion. So we're, we're creating a, the size of, um, you know, these smaller wings the smaller feathers compared to the, the longer feathers and all together they create our blue jay's wing. Now this is a blue jay but this type of way of creating wings can be used for anything so you know winged animals I can think about, more birds, um, even fantasy creatures like uh, Pegasus, the winged horse, um, dragons, can add wings, you know, um, eagles, you know. So there's so many different um, things that this can be applied to. So even if you're not super interested in, in our specific subject, it's always good to, you know, see what you can take from our lesson. And that way, um, you can use it in your own artwork. Especially now, it's such a good time to um, you know, explore your artwork because we are inside and art can take you elsewhere with your imagination. So as we um, get towards the bottom here, notice I'm spreading the wings out even more. And then the last one I'm gonna do is almost in line with this diagonal straight line. So it's coming out, pointing towards the bottom right corner of the paper and it is gonna be a little bit thinner and shorter, just like this one at the top is more thin. Okay, beautiful. 
So before we get into any shading, I do want to um, complete the, uh, the last area, which is going to, um, for this wing, which is going to be that dark tip um, that I talked about, the darker outline. So we want to make them just a little bit longer, especially here towards the middle. So you can just elongate, you can make these these ones are okay. They're shorter up here. Um, maybe this starting here. Just make it a little bit longer. Okay. And then you see this area here. Almost looks like a fingernail. That is what we're going to color in darker. But before we color it in, we're just going to make all of these little areas, um, uh, each of the wing, a little bit longer. And it becomes a little bit more skinny towards the bottom. So yeah, it really does look like nails, like, you know, fingernails <laughs> on the end of the uh, wing. So this view is, it is a side view, so um, we are only going to see this one wing here, um, but that does give us a sense of, you know, uh, three-dimensionality, so it, it makes it look a little more 3D. As you get closer to the left here, you're going to just... Um, you know, make this area a little bit shorter. And then these few ones up here, you can leave as, as is. So if you're still um, drawing these curved lines for the ends of the wings, that's fine. If you're ready to move on, you can shade in those areas, just probably light to medium pressure We are going to create more of a um, balance in the color gradation. So um, it's gonna go from like really bright blue to deeper blue, and then um, we're going to shade the blue on top of here. So this is just adding a darker value. So keep filling this in. And then the last thing, we're just going to do little tiny outlines for the edges of the wings on the left and the right side. I think I'm going to squeeze one more feather in here. Yeah, that looks a little bit more balanced. Okay, and then um, before we move on to the tail, the last area I do want to um, add is uh, we want to leave a little area um, 
white, so right between the shorter feathers and the longer feathers of the wing, there are these like almost white spots. So we can go ahead and just do curved lines. So these curves are just curving more um, the opposite way, so more towards the right. And we can leave the white of the paper. Um, if you are using a different colored paper, uh, you can just make sure you have a white colored pencil and it should go right on top. Uh, so um, the next step is just above there, do another layer of these curved lines. So these kind of oval shapes here are going to be left white, but right above it, it's going to be black. And it's a really deep black, so you can press really hard, really hard pressure. So I'll give you guys a few minutes to, to fill that in. All right, so uh, we are gonna finish off with the tail. And the tail is gonna be really similar to the um, lines that we created for these longer feathers here. So the first thing we wanna do is outline the top curved line here. Okay. And then you're gonna curve back around just a little bit. Okay. And then the next line we're going to do, back towards the top, curves and connects to the end of this line. And then it touches the sketch, sketch line. So yeah, that's why our sketches are very valuable because they serve as guidelines. They kind of show us which direction we need to go. So I'm just continuing to add these curves for the tail feathers. And each time the end is meeting that sketch. Don't worry about doing the exact same number as mine, just you want to fill in until you meet the um, last feather should connect with the outline. Okay, and then um, they do have this like really beautiful kind of striped pattern running through the tail feathers. So for that, you can start at the top and do a little bit of a curve to touch the next one. And then you're just gonna keep moving down with those little curved lines, similar to how we did the, the um, black outline on the top. But then you're gonna leave a little bit of space and then just continue that pattern of curves. 
so you can do this as many times as you'd like. I'll do it maybe like four, four or five stripe patterns. Yeah, four fits nicely. And yeah, this is really dark, so just press really hard. That's the beauty of using colored pencil is you can get um, many different values. Like this, we've only used black and white, but we have different values, really dark value, light value, kind of medium value here. So again, value is the lightness, darkness of a specific um, color. So that's it for the black. Oh, wait, actually, sorry. We just want to outline the remaining sketch lines. So for the top of the head and then the neck. And now we're done with black. Okay, so we can move on to color. So blue jays have beautiful blues. So, you know, again, you want a light, medium, and dark. If for some reason you don't have different types of blues, you can just use what we learned and use one blue color and use a really light pressure, medium pressure, darker pressure. Um, so that's fine as well. I'm gonna start out with the light blue and I'm, I'm actually looking at um, a beautiful photo as I'm doing this. So uh, especially with realism, realistic artists like to look at their surroundings if that means looking at a photo from a magazine, something that you um, pull up online or in a book, uh, you can get inspired that way. But also it's so amazing to just look out um, through your window and see you know, what you can observe uh, through that. Um, it's a really great exercise. So uh, we are gonna start out by adding some really bright blues um, in the top here. So similar to how we've been learning how to sketch and shade, you want to hold your pencil closer towards the bottom with a looser um, looser uh, kind of hold on it. That way you can really get the whole entire tip of the pencil touching the paper, so holding it really flat and shading it that way. And that way you can go pretty quickly, but then when you get closer to the edges, you can have a little bit more control. So I'm just gonna show you for those of you that don't, <laughs> for those of you that don't have um, multiple colors, this is a really light pressure up here, barely touching it, almost like a feather touching the paper, okay? This is a medium pressure, pressing down a little bit harder. This is a dark, really hard pressure. So darker value. So with one color, you can get different values. So I'm just using a really dark pressure here. I really want to get that nice um, application of this light blue. Um, I love Prismacolors, so if you're wondering, this is a turquoise, turquoise color. Okay, so once you've filled in that first layer of feathers, I am going to use this down at the tail. Uh, so the tail, mm, it's looking like maybe these middle two s sections here. So I'm just going to use it to fill in, Let's see, one and two striped areas. Okay, uh, and let's see anywhere else. I think that's it for this one. So you can just put this pencil to the side. And now I'm going to grab my medium 
value blue. Um, this one I'm using, it's called Mediterranean blue, like the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, so just go ahead and use this for the next layer of feathers. I tend to start out by just, you know, shading a big area. Maybe you like the way that this looks where it's kind of a um, hazy texture. That's fine if you like that. I'm going to bump up the, um, the value a little bit more. So I'm just going to press down a little bit harder. And then this blue I'm also going to use for the top of the face here. So before we color in this whole area, we do want to create the outline. So from here, this point of the black, the blue jay has this um, pattern where the blue curves around and almost frames the eye. So everything above that curve line, you can use your pencil for. Now if you really want to get into texture, rather than filling this in like, you know, a shape, like a coloring book, you want to go in and do each line. So you actually want some of the white of the paper showing, because that's also going to show a little bit more texture. It's going to show each of the little lines, so think of these as like really thin feathers that are um, creating the crest of the blue jay. I'll bring that closer for you to see. See, so I have little white areas showing. And then the next thing we want to do is um, add this color. We're going to add it to the bottom of the tail. Okay. And then we also want to do it along um, these wings. Now for these wings, we are going to do it a little differently rather than filling it completely in. Um, we are going to do about half of the wing. So I'll show you what that means. So, you know, starting up here, actually this first one along the back, you can fill the whole thing in. Okay, so that first wing, that first feather, that's fine. You can fill that whole thing in. Now. Um, what we're going to do is do a line cutting that feather in half and now we're going to fill in the top half with our blue. This is going to look super awesome once we get to the end. So again, cut the feather in half and then just fill in the top half. So you're going to have this um, pattern of blue, white, blue, white stripes that are going at a diagonal.
I really love coloring. It's I feel like it's so relaxing and I know that we only see each other twice a week, but anytime you guys can find, you know, a moment to just it doesn't even have to be a full drawing like this, just to to sit down, you know, like grab your colors, whatever they are. You can turn on some relaxing music. It's super good for your brain. It's super good for your mind. It allows your mind a like space of rest. And then, you know, anytime after this, I feel so much more peaceful. Another thing too, I know like right now, it's kind of, there's a lot of emotions going on. We're all together and if you're lucky, you get to be with your family, but some I know sometimes that can be hard and, and anytime I feel like Oh, I have too many emotions right now like I just go ahead and I grab my colors and and yeah art is really um, truly relaxing it's really powerful in that way that's another thing you can do if you don't want to you know lightly blow across to get the um, little little pieces of the color pencil off you can just hold your paper up and Tap it down, it'll fall to the wayside. All right, beautiful. Okay, so I'm gonna pick up the pace a little bit. Now the last color value we're gonna do is this deep blue. So we have the lighter, medium, and the dark. Uh, this blue, it's called ultramarine. This is the blue that the Egyptians used um, in their hieroglyphics and uh, you know for their makeup. It's a really royal blue color. So these white areas that we left, we're going to now shade them with this blue. So you can start off at the top, just do a little outline here. Just touching the, the black. Okay. And then again, leave these little white areas, but everywhere underneath okay, you can do the blue and then we also want to like I talked about before add some of that blue just right on top of the the black so you'll see a difference I'll show you right now so you'll see a difference between this black and when I add a deep blue so it's going to really pull all the colors together. Um, another trick is when you start getting a lot of colors mixing and, and you don't want to smear them with your finger, you can grab, you know, like a scrap paper and just if you put it on top of the areas that you've colored, you can kind of protect them that way. Okay. And then I know some of you have done this with me together in class, but 
then that way you can, you know, not worry about, you know, smearing or um, making the areas that you've colored kind of smudged. So that's one way to kind of protect your, your colors there. And then you just keep moving it down as you go. This is just scrap paper, like recycled paper I already used. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. So today we have been doing a lot of line work, a lot of colors. So, you know, the focus today was more on um, color value and texture. Uh, we, we probably don't have much time together to go over background ideas, but you're always welcome to add, you know, anything in the background if you'd like to um, after class. All right, so beautiful. Okay, so um, the last thing we're gonna do for our blue jay. Uh, we do want to add this deep blue, my ultramarine blue, into the top pattern here, the striped area of the, of the tail. This stays white, but lastly, to really get that nice texture, I'm going to add a few little tiny ultramarine blue lines in the crest, and then it really brings together all of the colors. So your eye moves through the whole entire piece. Um, this is called the composition and it's nice to use colors you know this deep blue is sprinkled throughout the white frames it so it's nice to use color to help bring your eyes around so beautiful job with your blue jays um, and I'm looking forward to creating some more art with you we can share our work all together um, before we wrap up <laughs>